Are you spending more time mixing than you would like? Are you focused on getting every piece of the puzzle perfect instead of getting music out to your fans? Mixing can be a paralyzing process, but it doesn't have to be. Let's talk about it. Hello again, and welcome back to another episode of Sound Strategies, your source for all things audio related. I regularly share mixing tips, recording experiments, and other cool stuff to help you get the most out of your projects. If this is your first time joining me, I hope that you'll consider subscribing for more videos. And I want to ask you, what is your approach when working through a mix? Do you have a set workflow or a unique strategy that you use to mix? Leave a comment below. This week, we're going to discuss the benefits of quick mixing. Now, before I go any further, I want to state that I'm not encouraging you to rush through your mixes and spit out a bunch of sloppy tunes. This is an exercise that will help you to change your perspective on the mixing process by encouraging you to focus on the important stuff first. Mixing quickly can transform your mixes, help you get your music online faster than ever, and give you a better perspective as to how your audience will listen to your music. Quick mixing is an approach that focuses on communicating the message of the song first, by paying more attention to what's important to the song's story. In this video, I'm going to share with you six tips to help you mix faster and with better results. I will explain the benefits of setting limits to your workflow to maximize your productivity and output and help prevent chasing your tail with more subtle mix decisions. Ready? Here we go. Number one, set time limits. When working in a DAW, it's really easy to get sidetracked. We can get distracted focusing on one little detail that makes very little difference on the emotional impact of the song. And most of these little tweaks should have been done in editing. It's also easy to wear out our ears by denying them regular break periods. It's a great practice to set a timer during your mix session and give yourself a time frame to work with. For a quick mix, set a timer for 20 minutes and challenge yourself to create the best mix that you can. Start by focusing on volume balance. Then take a five minute break, let your ears rest, and come back to the song refreshed and ready to dive in again. Focus on reacting to things that stick out of the mix. Lower the faders or reduce the gain until you have a balanced representation of the song. Turn down what's too loud rather than turning up what you can't hear. This will provide more headroom so that your tracks won't overload your mix bus. Using time management techniques trains your mind to maintain focus, enable flow, and allows your ears a chance to rest in order to remain more objective to the needs of the song. Check out this video to see how a tomato can improve your workflow. Number two, react from the gut. Listen to the song and position the faders in a good balance. If something really draws your attention, turn it down. Make sure that every piece is contributing and has its place between the speakers. If you don't like something or you aren't using it, get rid of it or mute it at least. It's not necessary to try and fit everything between the speakers right away. If you can tell the story with a few less guitar layers or only one set of drum overheads, then great. It saves you the extra faders to balance as well as the extra processing. Make decisions and commit to them. Once you get your mix sounding the way you want it, go ahead and reach for those extra layers to fill your sections out. In fact, mixing in a subtractive nature can be of benefit, removing elements from the quieter sections as you build up to the song's main payoff, the chorus or the drop. Creating a contrast between the payoff and the previous sections really helps to improve that impact of the hook or the payoff. After all, this is the most memorable part of the song and you want it to stand out. Number three, listen like your audience. Your listener needs to hear what's necessary in communicating the message of the song. In most music, this is the vocals. Nothing should compete with the lead vocal. If your song is an instrumental tune, be really clear on what your main focus is. Depending on the song, you may change this in each section. This can be a great way of keeping the listener's attention by changing the perspective between elements in a mix. The song should groove without you having to strain your ears to hear a specific instrument, especially the important ones. Things like the kick, the snare, or the vocals should be audible from outside the listening position. After all, many listeners aren't going to listen in the near stereo field of studio monitors. So listen on headphones, earbuds, your laptop, phone speakers, the car system. Get some really small crappy mid-range speakers so you can have an idea of how your mixes will translate into the real world. Make compromises based on listening across multiple platforms. Number four, stick to the basics. There are a limitless amount of plugins for mixing and mastering and I recommend sticking to the basics used by mix engineers for decades. A handful of tools will be more than enough to make a great sounding mix. 
EQ, compression, saturation, reverb, delay, automation. In my opinion, these are the most important tools to make a great sounding mix. Subtractive EQ will help you to control problem frequency areas in each instrument and better focus the frequency distribution across your mix. A subtractive approach can filter out frequencies that are not needed and otherwise clutter the mix. Combine this with an additive EQ to fit tracks together in a smoother, more musical way while also preventing frequency masking. Compression reduces the dynamic range of an instrument and it's great for keeping unruly, dynamic tracks in line while giving them a more consistent level. Not only will it make your tracks more consistent, but compression can make instruments have more confidence while also adding some extra character, attitude, and movement to the music. Reverb mimics the early reflections and ambience of a room using a mathematical algorithm. Short reverb times, under one second, can be used to lift a track out of a dense mix, while long reverb, something over three seconds, can add a sense of depth, and overall, reverb can make instruments sound as if they were performed within the same space. But you already knew that, didn't you? With reverb, less is often more as it can quickly muddy up a good mix, so use it sparingly. Delay can be a great alternative to this. It can still provide that added sense of depth without being as dense as reverb. The echoed repeats of a signal are usually at a fixed time interval and is often used in pop music on the vocal to repeat certain words or phrases. Okay, if there was a single plugin that functions as a talent knob, it would probably be this one. Saturation is one of my favorite effects and it can work wonders on just about anything. It adds additional harmonic content to make a more complex waveform. It can range from subtle grit to really creamy distortion. Some saturation plugins mimic the soft peak compression of tape recorders. This can help reduce the pointy sound of the transient while still keeping that loud, fat nature that saturation adds. And finally, automation. This is the secret sauce to pro mixing. Automation allows you to draw in the dynamics of each instrument. If you can get your hands on a DAW controller like this PreSonus fader port, your life will change forever. Just manually riding the fader up and down while feeling the pulse of the music can make a huge difference to the emotional impact of a song. Imagine like you're the conductor and you get to control each instrument within the orchestra. The accumulative effect of automation across the mix creates a more natural ebb and flow to the music, much like the musicality of a live ensemble. So these are the essential tools to mixing and are used by every engineer in the business in some combination. Of course, there are a whole bunch of other great tools that you can use, but having a firm understanding of these basic mixing tools is necessary for building a solid foundation for you to make informed mixing decisions. Number five, don't obsess over small details because your listener won't. You hear things different from the average listener and that's why you're a music producer. You're special. It's really easy to feel self-conscious about the quality of our mixes. We often obsess over making the mix perfect, but your listener won't really give it that much thought. In fact, they won't consider any of the things that you often think about when you listen to your projects. It's just music to them. They don't know your music like you do, and they don't care about your music like you do. Use your best judgment to decide when the song is done and be able to step away from it. And always remember that your biggest job is to make the experience of the song as enjoyable as possible. And my last tip is really going to help you zero in on what's important and what's just auxiliary to the song. Number six, the 80-20 rule. This is also known as the Pareto principle. It states that 80% of problems come from 20% of causes. It's commonly used in many areas of business, economics, and athletics to explain the diminishing returns that come with the distribution of data. This principle can be used to state that 80% of sales come from 20% of clients, or that 80% of gains come from 20% of your exercises. Now again, this is not implying that you should ignore the other 20%, only that this area will have a much less noticeable impact on the end result. So when you're getting to know a mix, ask yourself these two questions. What is the 20% of your effort that will yield 80% of a perfect result? What is the 20% of your track that's responsible for 80% of your problems? Focus your time here. Perfection is often the enemy of production, so get your songs finished and release them to the world. So the objective of this video is not to encourage you to rush the mixing process, but to change your perspective on its purpose. Mixing is the most rewarding part of the production process, because this is where we get to make everything work together to tell a story and support that narrative. Last year, I emailed one of my favorite mix engineers, Michael Brower, and he told me, very succinctly, mixing is all about bringing out the emotion of the song. He went on to say that what dictates most of his approach is what feels best for each song. He mixes using gut instincts, and he's been mixing a ton of amazing records. I made a playlist on Spotify with a bunch of his mixes if you'd like to check it out. 
So with that said, mix with your audience in mind, try and get in touch with their perspective when listening to music, take breaks to keep your ears fresh, use basic tools for most things, and start with the big stuff before you're diving into the nitty gritty details. That's all for this video. Leave a comment and a like if that's what you want to do, and hit that subscribe button for more videos about recording experiments, mixing tips, and much more. Thanks for watching, and happy mixing.